I mean, take the Gonds, for instance. In Andhra, they speak Gondi, which is very close to Telugu, a Dravidian language. In Madhya Pradesh, they speak Hindi. In the East, they speak languages that are closer to Austro-Asiatic. And yet, if you look at the genetic samples of the Gonds, they clearly all have a common origin, regardless of which region they live in now. And they are also genetically different from their neighboring, immediately neighboring uh, communities. So genes by themselves are not an indicator of language or culture. That was the first rookie mistake that some pretty big genetic groups made. The second thing I would like to say is no culture anywhere in the world has been decisively identified by the archaeologists as being proto-Indo-European. The mother culture from which all the branches of Indo-European languages are supposed to have been derived. There is no identification of any precise culture. They do not even know when it may have existed, whether it was a Neolithic culture, a Mesolithic culture, a Chalcolithic culture, or a Bronze Age culture. Nobody knows. There are only speculations. So therefore, if any genetics paper turns up suddenly and says that we have discovered migrations from this particular place to all over Europe and all over South Asia, and therefore these migrations was, were what carried the Indo-European languages all over, they are making a fundamentally unfounded statement. The reasoning is circular. There is just no basis to make that claim. But if you look at the archaeological evidence, I mean, one of the first things is, at, at the time this theory was propounded, you did not have the Indus Valley Civilization. That was discovered starting from 1922. So once you did find the Indus Valley Civilization, for a very long time, Aryan invasion or migration theory was used to explain the supposed demise, or at least decline, of the Indus Valley Civilization. Towards the 1960s, it became clear that there was no such demise at all. Yes, in one or two regions, they did suffer a depopulation, like Baluchistan. Baluchistan, with the decline in rainfall, it became so arid, you cannot support any crops over there anymore. So it became impossible to support large populations, so people just moved away from there. The same also happened in the, the Saraswati Valley. Those, the cities in the Saraswati Valley were abruptly abandoned around 1900 BC, and that was because of presumably the vanishing of the Saraswati River. Apart from these two regions, there was really no decline. Some cities in Gujarat were actually expanding. There is in fact a dramatic increase in late Harappan settlements in Punjab and Haryana. And some Harappan cities continue to be inhabited to the present day. The, the, the steppy Bronze Age population, they were supposed to have entered, settled down in Punjab and Haryana, bringing their new language and culture with them. They slowly moved down the Ganges, established the Iron Age once they discovered iron around 700-800 BC on the Gangetic Plain, and well, so the story goes. The problem now is that by the time these Bronze Age steppe people are supposed to have come into India, we now know that India was well into the Iron Age. When by 1800 BC, deep on the Gangetic Plain, you have a village called Malhar, which is actually a large-scale iron-producing site. India's iron technology was indigenous and it was based on an adaptation of their existing copper technology. The furnaces are very, very similar. We have found a chariot and this chariot is going back to 2100 BC. So that is so before is the alleged R yeah, invasion. Yeah, certainly. And one final question about this R1 haplogroup. What has been your finding? Uh, yeah. Right now we have 10,000 individuals R1 data mm -hmm. in our hand. And in average in India, about 35 to 40 percent people, they carry R1 A gene. So uh, we are investigating the R1 A diversity mm -hmm. and we have found maximum diversity of R1 A branches in India. So in genetics, if a diversity is there in any genetic branches, so this diversity comes uh, after mutations. If you have mutations uh, hotspot in different different region of a chromosome of a uh, DNA chunks, so uh, the origin of that diversity will be local. This is proven, well proven, uh, proven records. So uh, from this data, we are like uh, we are hundred percent sure that R1A evolved in India. A specific date is going back to up at least fifteen thousand years. Yes. Before, yeah. For people who have been described as pastoralists, herders, unfortunately we see no such signs of any people having moved in because the cows that you have in India are exclusive to India. They are called Indicine, the humped zebu. And outside India, you have the, the taurines. Unfortunately, an analysis of something like 500 cows in India showed that there was virtually no presence of a taurine maternal DNA at all on the subcontinent, which is striking. 
it is impossible to believe that a population coming in from the steppe a pastoral herder community would not have brought in their livestock on the other hand you actually do have indian cow dna making its way to the steppe in line with the observation that neeraj mentioned that that they are able to find migrations out of india i just want to say you're missing one major component sure. which is the geological survey of india the yeah. mapping of the rivers the yes. saraswati river yeah. Yeah. the timing that goes along with that yeah. and the fact that the vedic the literature Veda that we were talking about earlier. is aware of the drying up of the saras what they occurred in the late or even post vedic age yeah. which would have to be 4000 years ago if we use the rivers video pasand aane par kripya like kare share kare aur channel ko subscribe karke bell icon zarur daba de taki hamare aane wali videos ki jankari sabse pehle aap tak pahunche dhanyawad